One of the most common tasks in Photoshop is cutting out images from their background. Now, most of the time when you cut them out, you get that little fringe around the edge. Right now, I'm gonna show you three different ways to get rid of those fringes very easily. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and thanks for tuning in and also thanks for tuning in last Thursday when we did our live stream. Now during that live stream, I got a question from someone asked about using minimum maximum filters for getting rid of fringes. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well as two other methods for getting rid of the fringes around the edges and our cutouts inside of Photoshop. All right guys, it's official live streams. So while we're going through this global pandemic, in order to bring us together as a community, I'm going to be running a live stream here on Photoshop Cafe on the YouTube channel at 1 p.m. every single Thursday until further notice. So I'm not going to do this forever. We're just going to do it for the next few weeks or whatever it takes to get us through this period of time so we can kind of come together as a community, learn some cool things and chat. So I look forward to seeing you guys so here's a little composite that I used last week on our live stream. And I just wanted to honor just the regular people in the world that are keeping the world going in the COVID-19 pandemic. So the rest of us who are in shelter are able to get food supplies, medical treatment, and the things that we need. So obviously we need to cut out all the people to get this floating head look, which is popular in movie posters. So let's have a look here at the cook. All right, so if we look at this image here of the chef, we can see we've got a dark edge or a dark fringe running all the way around. You can see it particularly in his hat, on his clothing. So what we want to do is get rid of it. Now, whenever you make a selection, of course, you never want to use the eraser tool or delete. You want to use the layer mask. So if I hit the Alt or the Option key and click, you can see there's our layer mask there. Now, I have other tutorials that show you how to cut out and use layer masks. So what we want to do now is get rid of this little black fringe because this is going to really show up badly when we go to do compositing. Now there's three different ways, but last week during the live stream, I had someone ask specifically, how do I do this using the minimum filter? So I'll show you exactly what you want to do is make sure you're on your mask. And then we're going to go under image, actually under filter. And then we're going to go to other. And if we go down here, we're going to see one called minimum. If I turn on the minimum filter, notice what it does is it gets rid of that edge by shrinking that mask. As I increase it more, it's going to shrink it more. So you want to keep it as low as you possibly can so you're losing less of your image. Now there's two different settings here. There's squareness and there's roundness. So let me quickly show you what squareness and roundness does. Now let's go under filter, other, and now if we go down to the minimum, Watch what happens. If we increase the size of this, it'll take a second for that to get bigger. And see what's happening now when we're doing roundness. This is what happens when we use squareness. So as we increase this, the squareness starts to cut off the rounded edges, whereas the roundness will maintain these rounded edges or even exaggerate them a little bit more. So, you know, choose whichever one's going to work best for you, depending on your situation. Now, notice that this is expanding the black. So if your mask was inverted, you can just go under here and under filter, use other. And then what we're going to do this time is use maximum and maximum expands white. So if we increase the size of this, notice that these get smaller now. So Maximum expands white, minimum expands black. So when you're working on your mask, just remember that. And you can use this to quickly clean up those masks. Let's look at the second method. And this is a method I go to often because it's just a very quick method to use. If I click here and I choose the mask and we're looking in here, let me zoom in a little bit so we can see these edges, see these dark edges here. If I hit control L for levels, that would be command L on Mac L for levels. And now we've got this mask. What we can do is we can actually pull in here and we can contract that edge. Look at that. See how it cleans up the edge. And now we've got a beautiful edge here. Now don't worry about some of the other areas. I'm not trying to do a perfect cut out. I just want to show you how these edges can be cleaned up and see that. In fact, let me zoom in even closer so you can really see this right down to the pixel. 
So we are doing this, this is called choking the mask. Let's find a nice area that's got some horrible edges there. Watch this. Control L for levels. And then we're just going to pull it in on the black side. And notice we can see it contract right in there. And you can see we get this nice clean edge now just by choking this mask. Okay, I also have a third method to show you, and this is a little different because both of these methods do it globally, meaning that it contracts the entire mask. Sometimes you don't want to contract the entire mask because sometimes you can lose things like hair. So when you do that, you expand and contract that mask. Sometimes you lose the hair and it can start to look like helmet hair. So here's a method I like to use where you have control over exactly where you want to get rid of the fringing and where you don't want to change the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit control and click on that layer mask to load up the mask. Now I'm going to contract this, meaning I'm going to make that selection one pixel smaller. So I'm going to choose select, modify. This is where you modify all your selections. Contract by one, just one single pixel. And if you look in here and we zoom in, you can see that this is now inside that area. Now, don't just go and hit delete or anything like that just yet. A couple more things. One thing we want to do is we want to soften that edge. So we're going to choose select, modify our selection once again, and this time we're going to put a feather on it. Now we're going to put the feather one pixel. Well, doesn't logic kind of mean that, you know, if we feather it by one pixel and contract it by one pixel, we're not going to get anything because you can't really go more than a pixel. Well, this is correct. But because of the way that Photoshop uses interpolation, we can take advantage of this. And even though we're contracting it by one pixel and creating a one pixel feather, we're going to be able to get some very, very precise edges. Check this out. So the first thing we want to do now Notice we've selected our person. We want to inverse this mask. That means we want to swap it around. So Command Shift I or Control Shift I for invert. Notice now that we've got all of this selected. So if we go in here and we look, see how that edge now is still there. Now, if you wanted to get rid of that entire edge and just use this as a global masking, all you would need to do is just fill that selected area of black and that'll go in there. But if we want more precise control, let's hit the X key. I'm going to hit the B for the brush tool or just click on the brush tool. And let's get a soft edge brush. So we're going to go up under the general brushes here. Soft round will work nicely. And turn the opacity all the way up. Great. Now let's zoom in a little bit closer. So I'm just hitting the Alt scroll wheel to zoom in here. And I can see that edge, but I can also see the marching ant. So it's a little hard to make out the edge. So what we can do is we can hide these by hitting Control H and that would be Command H. Now, the first time you click this, you're going to get this option. The first time you hit Command or Control H is what do you want to do with this? Because I'm on the Mac. The keyboard shortcut to hide Photoshop or any program is the Command H. But I don't want to hide Photoshop. I want to hide extras. So I'm going to click here. And notice now it hides that selection. That selection is still active, but it's hidden and you can't see it. This enables us to see what we're working on. And by the way, you only have to do this the first time you select. Next time I hit Control H or Command H, it's just going to hide the selection. All right, let's make the brush bigger with the right bracket key. Now we're painting on the mask with a black brush. Watch what happens. Look at that. I can just paint away that jaggy, fringy edge by hand. And look at this, we just get this beautiful edge, just like that. Let's go up here. And you can see how well that works. Now, even if you're not happy with that, you can actually go back a second time, look, and it will actually even go more if you need to. Generally though, usually I just get to do it once. And if this isn't working correctly for you, like it's still not getting rid of the edge, then try expanding that by two pixels instead of one, because that means you're working on a really, really high resolution image. All right, so there's the three different methods for you to get rid of those jaggy fringes, the halos, whatever it is you want to call them. They're annoying. They can ruin your composite. But as you can see, 
three different ways to get rid of them really easy. Now I've got a question for you guys. Did you know these techniques before? Let me know in the comments underneath if any of these are new to you. And by the way, if you guys are new here to Photoshop Cafe, as you can tell, we do Photoshop tutorials. And if you want to get Photoshop tutorials every week, hit the subscribe button right here and then go to the bell icon and make sure you turn on all. Now, if you're not getting notifications and you are subscribed, make sure you go from personalized to all. Otherwise, YouTube is not going to let you know when I upload that new video, which is every single week. And anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.